Wait, Rob? Is that who we're talking about? Yeah. Rob and I are very much in love. Yeah. Rob has a very hard time expressing that. Xander, pump. Xander, pump. Xander, pump. Xander, pump. Rob. Yeah. Rob makes me so f***ing happy. Yeah. Rob's never mad. I've never in 11 years seen him mad. Yeah. Rob, he likes coffee with his creamer. Like, I can't wait for, like, Rob and I need a house one day. Rob and I are gonna have, like, two kids. Yeah. Xander, pump. Xander, pump. Xander, pump. Xander, pump. Rob. Yeah. Welcome to Vanderpump Robs, a podcast about Hollywood, Charleston, and everything in between. I'm Rob Schulte, and today I welcome back a very special guest. All guests are special, but some are... Quite frankly, a little <laughs> bit more special than others. Um, from the podcast, your Kickstarter sucks. Mike Hale is with us. Hey, what up, buddy? Hey, what's up, man? You know, I was I was going back. I was listening to our uh, classic episode. People continually yeah. email me about where we were going to talk about Vanderpump Rules and ended up just talking about Juiced and the pickup artist for pretty much <laughs> the entire episode. <laughs> uh, and I had to ask you, have you discovered any any new treasures since then? Oh, man. Um from inmate to roommate is back. I've been oh, watching shit. that. Oh, um, shit. Yeah. So, uh, what else have I been watching reality wise? I've been catching some Love Island, but I can't really get into it. I have trouble with Love Island. Um, yeah. But I have been watching this one because, of course, it has the Vanderpump tie in with Ariana. And it's so funny because I had never watched a whole season of that show. I didn't realize like the host is on like, every 10 episodes like she's like that must be such a cush gig to be like yeah fly to fiji <laughs> yeah film for five minutes like one of these um also i also been watching you bet you remember the show beyond belief factor fiction with like <laughs> yeah. Jonathan Frakes? i've been <laughs> yeah. watching that and his gig is so cool because he just shows up at the beginning and the end of the episode or whatever <laughs> you're in you're in the studio for what like 20 minutes or something no Knocking way it out and then catching <laughs> that check that's Dude. so clutch Frakes knows how to like make a mint and <laughs> like I'll direct one episode of a new star Wars or star Trek a season. Yeah. And then I'll like go in and do talking heads on shows like beyond belief. <laughs> <laughs> so much. God, I love it. Um, another thing I watched that I thought was right up the Mike Hale alley is, uh, is like big Hollywood sleaze movies. I've been covering them on my Patreon. But this week I watched Angel 4 colon Undercover. I think I've heard of this series, yeah. Yeah, it's wild. It's like, you know, uh, street worker by night, yeah. student by day, sort of Hollywood sleaze. And uh, by the time we got to Angel 4, like all the <laughs> rules were out the window. And let me tell you, it was like quintessential, like, if I thought of the USA network, this is yeah. the movie that would be showing. Oh, that's, on that's my shit. I got to watch yeah. this. Then. Dude, Angel for I, <laughs> remind me once we're done, I'll give you uh, I'll give you my Plex credentials and you yeah. can just dive in. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you're so it sounds like you're sticking with TLC. You haven't become a, a Bravo bro. Yeah, I, I was looking at the list of Bravo shows. They have so many shows. I'm like, I've never seen like any of these this is like the the southern hospitality is an offshoot of southern charm, was that? Southern charm which yeah. was an offshoot of uh summer house i think <laughs> kind so of? it's like damn i gotta catch up well and all this stuff <laughs> you know no you don't but <laughs> <laughs> the weird thing about me is like i get pulled into it's not like it's against my will or anything but i get pulled into these communities like the fan communities yeah. and so many people are just like gasping for breath to be like i need to cover all the news everything that's happening and i was like no way dude i'm just gonna like watch shows from two years ago and like when there's occasionally a new season of something maybe i'll cover it but i'm not i can't i can't do that i can't, there's like yeah. three lawsuits going on right now that people are like trying to become paralegals i guess and podcasters at the same time. It ain't it. Ain't it. <laughs> but maybe we should just dive into this Southern Hospitality episode. Season one, episode five, came out January 2nd, 2023. The episode's called Rock the Boat, and the description from bravotv.com is, 
The Republic crew parties on Lake Norman, but when Leva sees their inappropriate Instagram posts, she threatens to fire people. After Grace Lily learns that Mia's friend went on a date with her crush, her emotional outburst leaves her on the outs with the group. Mikkel takes a leap of faith and invites a romantic interest to their party, but things take an awkward turn when the date is interrogated by Emmy. This fucking episode, man. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I, will you, I will clue you in on something. Rose. Yes, please. I watched the wrong episode. I watched season two, episode five. <laughs> but <laughs> was that my fault? Is this my fault? Did I, I speak- thought it was. I thought it was like that in the document, but maybe I made a mistake. That's okay. <laughs> hey, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to go through it, and you're going to react because yeah. I think the the big thing here is that when my kale comes on the podcast, uh, get ready for some twists and turns. It was season one, episode five in the doc. I just. <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> well, you're, you're going to need to tell me what's up, but here's the yeah. thing. We'll react. You can tell me the, uh, you can tell <laughs> me your experience. How about yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, don't, don't, here's the one thing. Do not let this keep you up at night, please. Don't. Well, I'm like, I was started to watch, I started watching season one, episode one, two. I'm uh-huh. like, well, I'm going to go back and watch all of it or whatever. So I would have gotten there. Eventually. You would have. It's that's the thing. Here's the thing. If you can pull out some like cool sex guy tweets in the middle of this, then <laughs> yeah. everything will be redeemed. Uh, so here's the thing. They go to Charlotte. This is like, you know, they always do a cast trip yeah. and uh, they see some NASCAR but the next day, they've all partied so hard that they're waking up hungover as shit. But they got to meet race car driver Ross Chastain. I know nothing about this man. And uh, Grace Lilly was like handing her business card that essentially said, come to Republic and we can uh, have a good time. But uh, he follows a different girl on Instagram the next day. And this triggers Grace. Damn. Yeah. Apparently... When guys approach her friends and not her, it's a uh, it's very triggering. And we're told a tale of this happening in Tulum with a baseball player and uh, one of the cast members named Maddie. And ain't that the way? These that's, southern girls just getting triggered, man. That sucks, man. <laughs> it, it doesn't. It's, what if? I mean, I would like a race car driver to follow me on Instagram. Yeah, that would be so nice. A lot of the a lot of the stuff that these guys. Now I'm not like a rich guy who really? who works at like a high class restaurant. But I'm you not. could. You could. Though. I probably could do it. <laughs> I'll get fired immediately. <laughs> <laughs> um but a lot of their problems are like, oh, you kissed her. <laughs> you helped her pick out an outfit what if, when you're not even dating. It uh, almost feels a bit manufactured. <laughs> Also, it's like, I mean, I'm just like an old man, you know, I'm like 40 and it's like, oh, this shouldn't be a problem for more than like an hour or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> shouldn't be upset about this for more than like 30 minutes or something. Or or like maybe know. just like slightly peeved and then like go yeah, to the movies yeah, yeah. and not give a shit. Like, oh, I, that guy's an asshole. I'm not dealing with that guy. Yeah. Anymore. Oh, that, move on. With dude my sucks. My, my, yeah. I, I don't care about my coworkers. <laughs> um, here's the thing with me. I flew too close to the sun once. And when I moved to Los Angeles, I went and partied with someone from Vanderpump rules and, uh, uh, woke up on their couch, uh, (laughs) hours later with them being like, dude, are you okay? And I was like, (laughs) you know what? Maybe I'm not cut out for reality TV. Damn. Was there like a camera crew there or something? No, there was. (laughs) Thank God. Cause that's, (laughs) that's my big thing going through all this. Like I got into some, heinous shit in my 20s but luckily like we're still in yeah, digital camera age so, you know? <laughs> so the gang head to the lake and 10 minutes into this like ride and they're they're in an rv uh someone captures cell phone video of grace lily freaking out and then we rewind to the previous monday where grace met a guy at a bar called bourbon and bubbles which is also owned by leva and uh then I guess Mia's friend starts dating the same guy. What we're getting at here is Mm. Grace has some confidence issues and she's taking it out on the ladies when it's really the guys that are stringing her along. These guys are jerks. They're jerks. I think that's the best way to put it. Like, Oh man. But 
they ultimately have a great time on a great Southern tradition. I'm from Missouri. You know, I think that's technically the South. So I know all about yeah. this. They go on pontoon boats. Mm -hmm. People love a fucking pontoon boat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do, especially in the South. We love it. Yeah. I I always think about the whoever created the pontoon boat was I mean, they're popular <laughs> in the South because it is a guy who just like tied some barrels together. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Put a motor, just slapped a fucking go-kart motor on it or something. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but while they're while they're on the pontoon boat, their boss texts them. So they're all on vacation. Yeah. But their boss texts them because they because they work right. They work. At, yeah. They're they're the VIPs, right? They're the the or the, the yeah the servers and, and stuff at the VIP of the restaurant. Okay. Yeah. But let's let's actually let's table the pontoon for a moment because <laughs> their job is to sell bottle service tables. Now I've never uh, felt like spending money on bottle service. I also don't drink anymore. But like yeah. even when I did drink, I was like, why would I want to do that when I can like drink cheap beer for a yeah. lot longer <laughs> just, i'll just drink a uh, bottle of old crow before i go to the bar yeah <laughs> and the, the, the like, like being in kansas and missouri and like thinking that i could like organize a group of my friends to throw down two hundred dollars <laughs> for like a night at the club yeah. is insane <laughs> like one of the one of the first times I went to a strip club was with this guy uh, that I went to high school with, and we had no money because we were just out of high school. And mm -hmm. like so, um, he had like just gotten a job or whatever at this Honda plant or something like that, and he was like, "Let's go to the strip club <laughs> in in Toledo, which was like thirty minutes away or whatever the fuck or where are we at." And like uh, we go there, and we ha I have no money, no. and like he's like, "I got you," and he goes to the <laughs> ATM and he pulls out two hundred and fifty dollars. Oh my god, rich guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, all right, man, but the drinks are like nine dollars, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, and the ATM fee of like fifty bucks at the strip yeah. club. <laughs> and like he goes and gets like a lap dancer or goes to the room or something like that for however much it is. And like they're come around asking me, they're like, You want a lap dance? I'll be like, I love one. However, <laughs> uh, <laughs> my, my dad took yeah. the money. <laughs> <laughs> Do you take credit? Uh <laughs> Yeah, I had a very similar experience. Broke as a joke, like fresh out of school, had gotten dumped. And the, you know, the boys at the bar are like, let's yeah. go to the strip club. You got dumped. And I was like, I that doesn't put money in my pocket, guys. <laughs> and they're like sitting there and they try and get me to get lap dance. And I'm like, you know, emo boy, you know, probably yeah. just awkward. sitting there awkward, not really wanting to do that. Like and they're then, like, you do you want to laugh dance? And they're like, do you want to do that? I don't yeah. know. I mean, <laughs> like, do you see you I'm not to, in the state right now? <laughs> and one of the guys that was with the party tried to pick a fight with me for not letting him <laughs> pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh cool. god. Well, the pontoon boat, pontoon boat. I'm getting my accent <laughs> back. Um Grace feels ganged up on, but uh Everyone ends up apologizing. It's fine. It's fine. No one wants, no one wants a part, a, a, a fight on a pontoon boat. They just want to like pop bottles and dance in their yeah. bikinis and take their shirts off. Yeah. I had a, I had Jordan Mor Morris on a couple episodes ago, and we were surprised at how much the dudes like to take their shirts off and eat fruit salad at the same time. <laughs> 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 the uh one of the one of the guys from season two now you'll get to this in season okay two. please give me the season heads up. two episode five uh yes. what's what was his name oh joe bradley no 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 it's, he's like a uh he's uh he was pouring milk on himself <laughs> what what is his name oh, so, oh, oh oh i don't know if he's in it yet damn okay well no you, well, got, I, you got quite a i can't wait for the little, little milk daddy scene <laughs> Getting getting a little homelander on us. Yeah, over yeah. Here. Uh, well, anyway, so at Leva, she has a, a condo on King Street, so that if she needs to go to one of her bars, she can mm. just leave her condo immediately. Um, she's with her director of sales and branding, uh, named Leah. I don't know what the fuck that means, but <laughs> that sounds like a job I want to have. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, 
they're about to get down some real work. It really looks like they're about to do some restaurant work. And, uh, <laughs> right before it happens, Lev is like, sorry, I don't usually hop on Instagram during our meetings while, that are being filmed for this TV show. <laughs> but I am shocked. I, I'm looking at this and, and I feel like I'm at these girls' gynecology appointments. And <laughs> le legitimately says this. Yeah. She's very frustrated because a lot of people are getting horny on Maine. Uh, mm. and posting all about the stuff that's going on on the pontoon boat. But you know what happens on the pontoon boat used to stay on the pontoon yeah. boat. Yep. Now you ever go to the media ruined everything. Yeah. Do you ever, uh, did you ever go to Lake of the Ozarks? Uh, -uh. okay. Well, that was like Southern Missouri and there's just, I mean, this is that in every like yeah. Southern town that has a collection of boats partying has yeah. their, you know, beer bongs and topless. Yeah parties and such the nice. parties, <laughs> you know what looks like a pretty <laughs> good time uh the gang then sober up a little bit and head to a farmer's market because apparently that's, <laughs> that's the next step <laughs> and uh mikhail who is also a vip concierge decides he's going to call a guy he met on the lake named dominic now um mikhail's going on a, on a on a limb here because mikhail's recently like all of his Republic friends know that he's gay, but his church family doesn't mm. know that he's gay. And, and he's come out to a couple of them, but he's worried because he's not sure if Dominic uh, is yeah. the same sexual orientation as him. And apparently that's going to be a big deal later in this episode. But uh, everyone thinks Dominic might be gay because um, when he calls and invites him to the space cowboy themed party, they're having at their Airbnb. Yeah. Uh, Dominic says, yeah, let me make sure I get the right jean shorts. <laughs> well, <laughs> he already had an outfit for it. Yes. He, <laughs> and it's really, really troublesome because as people are starting to grill back at the house, uh, Emmy is decided she, well, Emmy's not stopped drinking and she is. Mm incredibly wasted and essentially starting to play Columbo with this Dominic guy <laughs> once he comes over. Uh, but I'm going to throw to a quick break and we'll be right back. Rob makes me so happy. Yeah. Rob's never mad. I've never in 11 years seen him mad. Yeah. Mike, do you watch a lot of Columbo? Are you I, Columbo, I bro? do. I love, I love Columbo so much. Me too. I think it's the second episode of Columbo. Like there was that TV movie that's like episode yeah. one or whatever but i always remember the second episode where the the dude's got those big aviators like 70s aviators that like flash and like show the murder yeah. happening <laughs> i'll sometimes just go back and watch that so fucking sick like it looks so good yes like, uh, just the it, the way it's shot and stuff and like all the cool guest stars and stuff from the 70s yep. i mean johnny cash is in one episode he oh, plays like a dude. profile but yeah but still in it you know, um <laughs> Did you ever watch Poker Face? Uh, yeah, uh, I did. Yeah, the I I enjoyed Poker Face, but the only thing I didn't like, uh, you know, they they celebrate it as this homage to Columbo, but yeah. I didn't like that she's like, I got this thing. I just know when people are lying. It's like, nah, Columbo didn't have a thing. He just yeah, knew. he didn't have a supernatural power. <laughs> yeah, he just fucking knew. <laughs> I always think back to that Poker Face episode where the the barbecue grill master watched Okja and was like, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. Done. <laughs> I'm gonna send you my uh plex thing. I'm gonna I guess oh, cool. I could have done it afterwards. No, this is this is real life. This is <laughs> these people need this to know reality. It's because we're now becoming podcast homies. People need to know that that's why we can handle a conversation, even only one of us has watched the episode. <laughs> uh so the gang decide to chow down on their corn and Brussels sprouts and all that fun stuff. And Emmy continues to be a drunken mess because apparently in the order of operations, it's her turn to be the drunken fool on this show. <laughs> she does pull that Dom guy and he's like, so if you were an arrow, would you be an arrow that goes straight or an arrow that's a little curved? And he's like, oh, I'm, I'm straight. And oh God, <laughs> it's so awkward. Damn. You would think, but then you remember it's January 2nd, 2023 in Charleston. Yeah, uh, when this episode came out. So maybe there's some learning to be done in this group of folks. Luckily, Mikkel pulls 
Dominic aside later after everyone's been gossiping about it. And he's like, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. He's like, I'm just here to party. Essentially saying like, I'm just glad I got invited to be on a TV show. <laughs> like, Thanks. You know, grace has this weird production projection technique that can only be found on an Instagram influencer where she definitely has like called all these girls like names, but there's in is like, but you're making fun of me. And somehow like no one can wrap their head around it. I think, I think alcohol might be a culprit here. Um, <laughs> And then she says everyone's been bullying her. And, she, the, and the Mia girl is like, you literally called my friend like the S word. And <laughs> you're saying you're being bullied? I don't get it. Um, but I keep like the thing I wish you saw. And of course, you'll watch it soon enough. Yeah. But like they keep calling this an atomic or space cowboy party. And I don't <laughs> know why they have to have a theme because like. <laughs> it quickly cuts to like the basement of this Airbnb and they've just got like the party city, like rotating lights you can buy for 12 bucks off of Amazon. And then like <laughs> Maddie has like a professional DJ set up in this basement. It's like, well, you're not playing music because it's TV and everyone's still like dancing and drinking. It was like, a great scene of her, um, second season where she's DJing. She goes, she opens for uh fuck. Now I can't even remember. Oh, uh, J James Kennedy from oh, uh, DJ James Kennedy. Yeah, DJ James Kennedy. She opens for him or whatever. But uh, James Kennedy, uh, who has for a long time referred to himself as the White Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> I think he. I think he retired that one a couple years ago. <laughs> I will no longer be going as the White Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but now he just opens for Cascade, and Maddie opens for him. So yeah. My, they created uh, this this whole ecosystem of it's, and I can't wait to be a part of it. I'll, I I will. Uh, yeah, I have to give you the specific details of this after the recording. But you're familiar with Jack Allison. Mm -hmm. um, he wrote a book with my friend Kate Shapiro, and Kate had to go see James DJ, and Maddie was opening <laughs> for it oh, that's in sick. fucking Miami. <laughs> and, <she> was, <laughs> wow. and her story about getting press passes to go to this thing and watch <laughs> these two reality stars DJ for people that really just wanted to get fucked up at a Miami event and yeah. not care who's DJing might be one of the funniest things I've ever heard in my life. That's the, that's the thing. They show like the DJ parties and stuff like that. I'm interested in the people who are going to these and what mm -hmm. their story is about, you know, yeah. uh, real hard hitting. Maybe we could make a, like a Gimlet pod. level podcast yeah. about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, outside the party, Joe Bradley and Mia, they discuss Trevor's IG post, which was uh, the coincidentally the one Leva had seen earlier. Now, Trevor is Maddie's ex-boyfriend who cheated on her, but recently they're back together this season. And apparently on all of the posts he was doing of girls like twerking on the pontoon boat and stuff, he put the quote, jerky Joe <laughs> approved. <laughs> And I don't know what that means, but I have to think that <laughs> in your spreadsheet that I've heard all about, there has to be a guy who would post something like Jerky <laughs> Joe approved. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we don't we don't need to see what he's uh no. posting. Jerky Joe's posting. <laughs> Not at all. But I'm sure he's got a great big TikTok following. Um <laughs> the next morning, before everyone hits the road, we find out that uh Joe Bradley and Mia had made out, not Jerky Joe, just the other Joe. They had made out while in bed. That's what happens when you party on vacation. Uh, once they get into the RV, Grace Lily makes her way back to the like the tour bus room and just passes out, and no one else gets to sleep in that back room. Uh, confident, a confident fool, and I love it. <laughs> the gang find out that Leva had texted a few of the people saying, uh, we need to have a work meeting and uh, everyone gets really nervous because apparently even on vacation, you have to work with Leva. It is, it sounds like she sucks as a boss quite. Yeah. Frankly. She's not, they're on vacation and she's monitoring their uh, Instagram. And I have to wonder, like, is this the sort of job? Like, like I get it. Reality TV, mm -hmm. all of these things. But like, if if the TV wasn't associated with it, are they hired because they have like social media followings and like that's part of the gig? Because the Mikel guy, like the first episode, 
is on suspension because he promoted another club on his Instagram for mm-hmm. like a sponsored post or something. Yeah. And I, I don't think I could live that way. <laughs> I have a hard enough time. Like a, a fucking do not compete or something like a, I, th- I guess, but I also wonder if like, she's just getting like stupid 20 year olds that yeah. are like, yeah. Oh, my boss says I can't do that. And I yeah. Think, I think back to the days of like working at the bottleneck in Kansas and being like told like make sure you you post about our dollar fifty PBR draft <laughs> sales to yeah. Facebook. And be like, what the fuck am I getting out of this? It must be so cool to be like a business owner and be able to like <laughs> manip- manipulate 20 year olds to do whatever oh. you want because they're so scared. You know, you can yeah. just rip off their like, uh, you can just be like, don't clock out, but still st- work or whatever. And they're like, oh shit, I guess I have to don't clock out and still work because I'm yeah. just fucking 20 years old and I don't know shit. And if I'm I don't so get nice. to pay my $200 rent, <laughs> like, what will I do in my shitty college town apartment? <laughs> Oh man. Well, Mike, you're not going to be able to do this to the full extent, but at, you know, towards the end of the recap, and maybe you can just come up with something from the episodes you've have watched, but, uh, I do a segment called bourbon and bubbles, which is Mm. rose and thorn, you know, bourbon's the thing that skews more bad and bubbles, the thing that skews more good. And I'll tell you what mine are. Um, my bourbon is just essentially what we just said. Leva having her service workers, uh, represent her brand and control them on a very short leash. I think that's a little ridiculous, but uh, also hilarious because mm-hmm. these people want to continue to lick the boot uh, <laughs> at um, the King Street boot. And uh, my bubble would be Grace Lily standing up for herself even when she's wrong. I just love <laughs> these people on TV. It's great. I love their little problems. Yes. So- so maybe in the grand scheme of things, what would you say is your bourbon and your bubble? I guess my bourbon would be, yeah, you know, I lived in Charleston for a while. Yeah. I lived in Charleston for a time. Um, I lived in West Ashley and I oh, worked shit. at Papa John's. Oh, hell yeah. I rode a bike to work. So yeah. it was not, uh, it was not on the same level, but it was kind of because I was taking care of customers needs. And they and like made you clock out and still work. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I would say it wasn't, you know, exactly like this. So it didn't really hit for me um, mm. from a Charleston standpoint, but uh, my bubbles was, uh, and you'll see it, uh, the milk guy. <laughs> I can't wait. The milk I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually going to have you come back on the podcast <laughs> when I do, do that episode. <laughs> I'm going to watch, I'm going to watch the first season and the second season. And then what should I dip my toe into after this? Because, oh man, I've never seen, you know, Honestly, seen a little bit of Vanderpump, but not. You a should lot of watch. It. You should watch the first two seasons of Vanderpump, and if you're not like hooked, yeah, first season's only like eight episodes, and then it's like fourteen in the second. But the second season might be some of the best reality television I've ever yeah. seen. But I will tell you, in the first season, uh, they all go to Vegas for a birthday party and get really Xanaxed out and drunk and start a fight in a strip mall parking lot, and it's <laughs> wonderful. Uh, I think so cool. I think it's one of the best things that's ever happened, and um, and you will be very pleased with it, Mike. We've reached the end of this episode. Mm. I guess I got to ask you, what then do I need to catch up on? If I've I've never watched like a Love After Lockup or or anything like that, is there anything you'd suggest to me? There's so many shows of um the uh, uh, 90 Day Fiance stuff. Trying yeah. to keep on top of that, but it's like they keep coming out with them every single day, it <laughs> seems like. But I've been watching that. Um, what is it? Inmate to Roommate. Oh, Another yeah. Good one. Um, God damn. Yeah, those are good. I'll check it out on the Plex. Check uh, it out. Yeah, I just sent you the invite there. Appreciate it. Uh, I'll send you mine as well. And, you know, Mike, if if people are new to, to this episode, you want to let them know about your podcast as well? Yeah, the podcast is called uh, "Your Kickstarter Sucks." It's uh, it's about it's about Kickstarter and uh, a bunch of other stuff. Um, Perfect. <laughs> it's a great it's a great podcast. Uh, it did make the list. I had to for my day job create a list of uh, ten of my favorite podcasts and give a reason why. And I put YKS as number one wow. and went out in our work newsletter. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> That's it nice. went through. So <laughs> anyway, well, everyone, thanks for listening. If you want to get at bonus and ad free episodes, go to patreon.com slash Vanderpump Robs. Mike, 
appreciate it. I'm Thank gonna you. put a timer on September when we get that let's, next one let's going. Let's do that. Yeah. All right. See you later. See you.